Hi, I'm Dan Moberly, one of the engineers responsible for the design and implementation of the Apex Tube Matcher. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about how the Apex matching process works. Apex provides many improvements over typical matching which you've already seen. Automated testing, specific data gathering, and multiple test points. Another way in which Apex offers an improvement over other matching methods is in the precision by which the actual matches are made. To see what I mean, let's first look at a traditional matching system. In many traditional matching systems, such as a maxi matcher, readings can be imprecise. These other matching methods use simpler methods of rounding. A tube with a plate current of 18.50, for example, is often rounded to a simpler value of 19. In the same way, a tube with a plate current of 19.49 would also be rounded to a value of 19, and the two tubes match together in a pair. After all, they're both reading a value of 19, right? In reality, these tubes could be matched in much better pairs. There are other tubes out there reading much closer to that original 18.50. Wouldn't you rather have two tubes measuring 18.50 and 18.52, for example, matched together? Disregarding the fact that Apex is already vastly superior to this method in that it measures and matches at multiple data points, our automated algorithm is much improved in that it can very, very quickly analyze every tube in an enormous batch and find the sets of tubes which are best matched together. Manually comparing these tubes against one another to find the best matches possible would take hundreds of hours and a lot of time on a calculator. Our automated system can do it in seconds. You can see why traditional methods often use rounding. When our algorithm runs, it first organizes all of our tubes in a batch, which is typically in the hundreds or thousands of tubes. The Apex matcher then systematically goes through the list and makes matches one at a time against very tight tolerances. It then checks against neighboring tubes in the list to determine if a better match can be made. We call this look-ahead matching. Let's take a look at how it works. For demonstration purposes, we're going to pretend like the Apex tester is only matching a single point, as the look-ahead process is much simpler to understand if we do. In reality, this process is much more complex as it has to consider multiple points. This simplified version of the matching method should serve to help us understand how it works. Here, we're looking at a simple list of readings recorded by the Apex tester. Each of these values represents a different tube in the tester. In reality, this list is hundreds or thousands of tubes long. Here, we are only looking at a small subsection. You can see that the list is organized in order of current value, from lowest to highest. Let's imagine the Apex matcher is making matched quads. We begin by gathering the first four tubes together. We can already see that this is a closer match than what you would get on a traditional rounding system, and it does fall within our tolerances for a match quad. The standard deviation here is only 0.028. However, this is not the best match that we can make from this set of tubes. In order to determine this, the apex matcher looks ahead. It does this by dropping the lowest value off of the quad and grabbing the next value off of the list. This still falls within tolerance and would sound great in your amp but it's slightly worse match than we had before. The standard deviation for this group is slightly higher at 0.029. That means that our initial match quad was better. However, we don't stop here. We look ahead again to the next value. This is a much better match, a standard deviation of only 0.015. However, we continue to look ahead one more time to see if we can make a better match. The deviation is unfortunately up again, 0.018. That means we have our best match with this set of tubes. The system flags these tubes for a match and begins the process again, starting with the tube at 18.63. This results in very, very tightly matched tubes. Keep in mind that the actual process is much more complicated, as we're analyzing multiple points at a time. But this should give you a pretty solid idea of how the system works in practice. You may be wondering, aren't a lot of tubes left out of the matching process this way? Doesn't this method mean that sometimes you only get one match quad when you could get two or even three? The answer to that question is yes. We could get more match tubes if we used a traditional matching method, but at Apex we are looking for quality, not quantity. We get around this issue often by testing huge groups of tubes before matching them. That means that the likelihood of readings being very close together is much higher, allowing us to get more matches. However, the fact that tubes are often matched in pairs rather than quads comes into play here as well. You can see from our look-ahead matching process that the tubes left unmatched here are valued at 18.52 and 18.53. This is an extremely close matched pair. These tubes will later be matched together by the Apex tester as a matched pair. 
However, there are often tubes which don't qualify as matched pairs left behind, or individual tubes, such as 18.76. In these cases, the tubes are gathered together and used again in a later batch where they may find a perfect match. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed learning more about apex tube matching. We'll see you next time.